Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, where inspired women talk about the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship, and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We ask, in what ways can we show up more fully, live more meaningfully, parent more wholly, and love more unconditionally? How can we mine the wisdom from the experiences of our lives and expand into those challenges. If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs, so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. And if you feel like giving a little back to this free content, please become a patron of the show and receive extra member benefits for less than a coffee a month. Or you can leave a review on iTunes and Facebook, all of which helps the podcast keep going and reach more mummers who need this type of tonic for the soul. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast to find out more. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is How Your Home Tells the Story of You. And we are joined by a very special guest... Her name is Tara. Say hello. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) And she's from the Household Advisor and she worked with us just in the last few days to completely transform and reinvigorate various spaces Mm. in our home, which is all part of our process moving from Amplify in January, which if you're part of, we're working through a process of manifesting and mapping out our year with inspirations mm. and what we actually want to be able to call in. And then Bridget and I were like, right, well, then we need to become that woman. Yeah. So here we are with Tara who swept in and said, I will help you <laughs> create the space for which that woman is a reality. And that's why we're here. Like, it's so good. So isn't it? I'm just like sitting here shaking my head, like, in just kind of. <laughs> Or of how this has all kind of come about. Oh, it's unbelievable. Because it came about because I'd said, you know, my office is in a nightmare and Tara reached out. Okay, okay wait are. a second. See, this is what happens with vulnerability. Yeah. Just in case you're a vulnerability phobe, this is what happens when you say, oh, here's my ugly, shameful here's my piece. Mess. Here's my mess here. And then someone goes... That's not so shameful. I've got a solution for that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, see, I love it. I don't see it as being vulnerable or shameful. Like it's the ingredients for me to be able to help people. So it's, it's like I, it's thing. like I sent you a photo of my office, and you and you're like, oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah. And I'm like, really, it kind of makes me recoil in shame because you had so much trouble even sending the photo. I did. It took me. To, Julie was like, just send the goddamn photos, and I was like, I haven't sent them yet. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I finally sent the. Photos. I know you did. You sent them, and then you said, oh, we've done a podcast. Have a listen to that. And I was like oh, why did you not share this with me before? Like, it was just a beautiful thing. Like, it just made me so excited to help you guys. So, before we jump into really digesting what this can look like for you, I'd love to remind you to jump on to nourishingthemother.com.au, scroll on down to the red banner and join our tribe, and then we will shoot you off an email when we've got stuff going down and on and out in the world, and you can pick and choose where you'd love to dive deeper and what you'd love to know about so you don't miss it. Mm. So, nourishingthemother.com.au, come join our tribe. All right. First off, I really want to start with how this whole thing actually started like six years ago. Yes. <laughs> I know, and I was saying that to Bridget this morning that I, I was trying to get my head around how. So we'll go right back. Bridget and I started working together at Channel 10. Yeah, in 2005. Was it 2005? Yeah. I couldn't even remember when I it was. I was 21. Yeah, wow. It's <laughs> amazing. And yeah, so we'd become friends and then. You'd let well, then you'd left sort of ten, and, and mm. we, we were still friends on Facebook. On Facebook, yeah, but we're acquaintances by then. That's really, right. Yeah, we? that's what were right. you doing yeah. at Channel Ten? 
worked in we worked in media sales. Like, mm. So we worked in we sold advertising space. Mm. So you can ask me how much a advertising yeah. spot costs on the TV, and I can tell you roughly how much someone might have paid for that. <laughs> And did you like, were you then schooled in marketing and how to sell a space? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just manage, it's a, a lot of relationship management. Mm. A lot of relationship management. It was management. great. It was how much great. does that like pave the way anyway? Yeah. Mm. I was there for seven, seven and a half years. It was mm. amazing. It was a really amazing experience. It's like, it's pretty like intense and you're working with like agencies and mm. really big, big advertisers. Mm. And creative. Like one of my, my biggest client probably was McDonald's. It was wow. really, really, really big. But it's been really good for me, I think, in learning in business and creativity and marketing, I've mm. applied so much of what I learned and I've kind of sat down and thought, how would I do this for a client or what would I have done back then mm. is yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, so and it's all come back. It's like, it's like I'm back at my desk at Channel 10, but I'm doing it for myself. Yeah. Nothing's a deviation. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, so you met at Channel 10. Then yes. you left Channel 10 and you're now acquaintances on Facebook. Yeah. That's right. And then I had my son in July of 2013 and I was saying to Bridget before, I uh, descended into this huge deep dive of motherhood and it was a really, really deep and a really, really dark one because for a type A personality, I went in, I had high expectations that I would just nail it like I'd kind of nailed everything else in the mm. same way. Um, with structure and routine. With structure and routine and perfection and that my baby would sleep when I told it to sleep and it would eat when, you know, all of that. Mm. And my world just blew blew up, pretty much turned upside down. And that, that heavy ex, uh, like expectation that I had and the fact that I didn't have a tribe around me also meant that I then met um, postnatal depression within about the first eight or nine weeks mm. of that um, and thought I need to get like I, I need help something needs to happen here and I'm still I guess still in some ways recovering from a bit of that because then I went down the track I went to sleep school took my son to sleep school because I needed to sleep to be able to function mm. and my world wasn't functioning at all um, I met some beautiful professionals there that helped me on that journey and then I think I saw not long after that on Facebook a post that Bridget was doing a blog um, about Hugo. So Hugo was born a couple of months before mm. Luca was. And she said, I'll head over to my blog. I'm, I'm doing this on my mothering experience. And I... That's super brave, Bridgie. I don't remember doing that. It that must, it must have been a moment of bravery <laughs> no, on my part. Super brave. First baby. Yeah. Mm. It was the whole thing from the get-go. Like all the research, everything that you'd done in the lead up. Holy shit. Do you and still have that content? It's sitting in the archives somewhere. Oh, my God, please dig it out. <laughs> I remember, like, I did a post about co-sleeping because I decided to finally co-sleep. But that was like, you know, this is, like, you know, after all of these reasons why you shouldn't and every health profession telling you you couldn't. And that was a massive, you know, breaking mm. open of, you know, like I'm challenging what I've been told is right here. And it was just bits of that, wasn't it? Mm. Um, well, it was a whole new world for me, though, because it was, was a whole it? new world for what everyone else was telling me mm. my baby should do and what I should do and what my expectation. So what I find interesting here is it's a whole new world, but you took yourself on that journey mm. as opposed to, Bridget, you're an idiot. Mm. Mm. What do you think about that? Were there parts of you that thought, Bridget, you're an idiot? <laughs> I was just confronted by it. Mm. And I kind of think I've learned that when I'm confronted by something, there's something for him, me. To learn about to it. To learn rather mm -hmm. than being like, oh, no, it's their fault. And <sighs> That's what I was looking I, for. Yeah, I think there's a part yeah, of that. Because that's an unusual response. You have to already be comfortable with I don't know everything mm -hmm. to oh, be able yeah. to do that. Yeah, and I've also, I was saying to Richard, I have had that thirst uh, to, to learn and to be better and mm. to learn there more about is, myself the thirst for learning. and maybe mm. learn who I was mm. because at that point I had absolutely no idea and my beautiful aunt I will say I think was one of the stepping stones to this at 18 gave me a beautiful copy of You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay mm. and that just it just changed the way that I looked at the world mm. because I thought that there's so much more yeah, here than what I'm told. and I have always strived to to be better to to know more and that you can never know enough Mm -hmm. um, and this was not like no other. And and in every area of my life, I've kind of applied that, whether it was, you know, working at Channel 10 in corporate, then I went into Swinburne, I worked in education, and that was administration. I had never done that side of it. Um, and I just would sit back and I pretty much organised all our offices and, and had to learn the structures. And so I've just always liked to do that. And then mm -hmm. I thought, mothering, okay, I thought I... You know, my apply mom, apply the same thing. Yeah, yeah, but I've got no idea what I'm doing, mm. and I like I need yeah. some help, or I need to find some people that can kind of guide me on yeah. that, or my tribe, because I didn't, and I didn't yeah. have a mum, I didn't have 
a tribe. I didn't have anyone there backing me. It's actually the craziest thing that we still assume relationship, mothering Mm. and sexuality are innate within us. Mm. And that you should should just magically have a baby and tap into that and know what to do. That any of it just comes naturally Mm. as Mm. opposed to we see the value in hiring coaches and growing in Mm. all other areas of our life. Mm. And somehow Mm. those three plus wealth, Mm. I would say, that we're not taught in school, we go, You'll be right. <laughs> but, and, but it's also a reflection of what society's not valuing. Because I even, my uncle even said the other day to me, he's like, oh, you know, parenting doesn't come with a manual. And I'm thinking, well, you wouldn't say that about your finances yeah. or you wouldn't say that about like learning a new thing at work. Mm. So why? Or why, education. Or education. So why do we have that attitude to parenting when it's actually a relationship and learning how to cultivate a relationship? Mm. But as a culture, we don't value that. So we're going to say, oh, there's just, you know, there's no right way. And, Mm. you know. And I I think, too, the other thing is I had a really tough experience with breastfeeding and no one could explain to me. And and you guys have helped me so much with that. But no, the professionals were saying, I can't explain this. Mm. So I just had too much milk. I had so much milk. I could have fed every newborn ward in the country, literally, and my body just wouldn't stop. It didn't matter what I did. It wouldn't stop. My son had a horrible latch, so then I couldn't get it out. And I had uh, just, I had about 15 bouts of mastitis across both my, like, babies. We we worked with, I don't know if you remember, but we worked with Tara a little bit in Loathing to Loving around that. Do you remember? I don't remember that. No, because we were looking yeah, we did at a lot. We were because when we did, did it, we? and we did a did we You're do an amazing. did we do That's an episode amazing. on breastfeeding? I, I think we always talked about doing one, but I don't know that we did. But we did some work with you in that group mm. around what that metaphysically might be representing. Well, and that I think tapped me back in because I to thought Louise, Louise Hay. Hay, and I kept yeah. thinking maybe these people don't know everything. Do you know, maybe there's just something more yeah. to this. And I just, as I said, just kept following you and everything that you were doing. And I was like, there is. So you were following her blog, mm-hmm. Bridget's blog, mm-hmm. and, then, and then you were still interested. So you just kept tapping back in. Yeah. Wow. And reading. Look at the power mm-hmm. of just saying, I'm, I will I'm, share my journey. And I'm doing this thing, right? And even the narration of like, because because Tara listened from the start. Yeah, so this Tara's was before she'd even met you. <sighs> no, I know. Yeah. I didn't know Bridget well, yeah. this evolution, but mm. that's what I'm saying in terms mm. of the power of we think we're this one person who can't possibly change anything in the world mm. and who am I and blah, blah, blah. And yet you take one step that says, here, I'll show you part of me mm. and let you decide if, it, if there's something there for you or not. And look mm. at the magic. Like you just have no idea of the power. Oh, that, it's, it's that ripple effect that we really can't, no. can't grasp. Mm. That was huge. And then... Like then you met and started the podcast and all those hours that I spent breastfeeding, particularly with my daughter, so some years later, was just my saving grace in the middle of the night. And you, it was just, it was almost like it was my mm. time when I invested in me. I was like, oh, I can't wait to feed her because I'm going to sit What down. a flip is that? And I so love So good. That. That's exactly what I was like too. Yeah. And I was like, I'd have my headphones and so <laughs> they'd be behind and then there. And then I, so I'd be present with her and I'd be listening. And then I'd just be like, I get these little pockets, like every, you know, 15 so minute good. pockets. And I was, and, and then I had to be quite routine and regular because otherwise I got mastitis. So I knew what my day was yeah. like. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to get my little fix. Yeah, and I listen. I've listened to every podcast, and That's I said amazing. to Bridget, "Now on a Tuesday, I look at the app, and I'm like, is it there yet? Is it there yet? Is it there yet? <laughs> Why is it not here? What is, this, is my app not down? Like, Probably what? because we didn't get to it. <laughs> so yeah, it's been absolutely um, life changing. That's amazing for me, and it taught me too. I think to do motherhood my way. <sighs> yeah, and then I was saying to Bridget a couple of years ago, one of my mum's so friends good. sat down next to me and actually said to me. Do it your way. This is your chance to do it your way. And I was just like, she got it, she got it. This is that little whispering, like the Mm. universe kind of just the whole way through these little whisperings and things. Yeah. So So beautiful. Mm. Just bathe in that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So then. Then that continued on. And I think I, I've I've come to quite a few of your um Suburban and Sandcastle yeah, events. movies. Yeah. And then yeah. when you did the road trip I supported you in that. Yeah, you did. So we've kind of come in like in and out of our like Touch each other's points. life. Yeah, mm. a little bit. And then I hurt the disc in my back uh Christmas Eve and was pretty much flat on my back. Got into the bath one night, was listening to your intentions podcast, heard Bridget talk about her office and the disorganization <laughs> because I'd launched my business at the end of 
November just taken a leap of faith, got the idea and said, this is it. This is what I've been searching my whole life to do. This Hang on. Oh, my God. So did, let's just take it back to you did Loathing to Loving with us. And I yeah. remember having conversations around. Because it, it was also about, because you've got a banking and finance degree as well. Do, yes. And and you, we were like, don't you realise like, what you do? The genius. Like, the genius there. And, mm. and back yeah, then, you right. Saying, you yes. And I wasn't me. empowered at all. And I remember saying to you, yes, I would pay for that. Mm. 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 Yeah, but I just, I, I was a financial planner. I just didn't, I just didn't enjoy it. Like I did all this study. Well, it's funny because I did an arts degree as well, and and so I did them both. And then I came out, and everyone's like, "You've got to, you you've got to have that label. So you've got to be the accountant, you've got to be the yeah. financial advisor, you've got to be the lawyer, you've got to be the doctor." But I just never felt like I found that mm. label. The one that really spoke to you. Yeah, and I was really good at it. Like I did the, my banking and finance electives in my arts degree. So that's mm. how then I was like, oh, but I'm really good at this, so mm. I should do it because I'm really good yeah. at it. And I got out into practice, and I was like, oh my god, no. Like, because my dad, I think, had not had a passion for his work his whole life. And I was like, I'm just not. I don't want to be that I'm just not person. doing that. I'm not doing that. Like, it has to be right. Um, and so, I, and it's funny that within six months, and I was working down here, I was actually working in Mornington at a very small business because I didn't want to do the big corporate. I just missed a lot of the graduation positions. And I came home one night and I said to Dad, oh, I'm going to resign. And he said to me and my my um maiden name was lamb and he said lambs don't resign we don't do that oh, um, and i said like, well this one does oh do this one does <laughs> and i resigned the next day and left i had no like no i had no experience like i'd worked in retail and i babysat but i had no corporate mm. experience not a single clue what i was going to do i mean living at home so i was lucky in that sense and then advertised, I think, in the paper, a position at Channel 10 at Como. And I thought, that's really close to home. Oh. Why don't I apply for that? And got it. I hadn't done a lot of the study that a lot of the, the, like the I can't think of what it was, the postgraduate course. Hadn't done it. And then, yeah, landed in there. And at the end of that, changed around a little bit. Still hadn't been able to find what really called to me like that voice like since I was a little girl that they're, calling they're, yeah it's mm, like yeah. this whis- mm. it was like when I saw Frozen yeah. 2 actually just after cause, <laughs> no but it's like and I just and I I've got to see Frozen 2 I haven't really seen it yet did. yes and I was sitting there with my sore the back calling. yes and yeah. I was like oh yeah, yeah I know it's me. genius isn't it yeah, yeah. This, and it's like this, this this something saying this is not it this is not it this is not it uh, and then I done yeah I done all your programs and I done all the work and I done so much self reflection and then one day it was a bit like when I had the download with you guys the other day. I just woke up, it was like four o'clock on a Saturday morning and it just dropped in. You've got these skills, you're an organiser. Julie had said to me, you've just got to find your genius. And my son, a few weeks before that, we were sitting on the floor in the study one day and he said, Mummy, you know that organising really makes you smile? And I went, <gasps> The universe. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, yes. And then he'd won... It was a prize or a medal or something that way. He came home and goes, oh, I got to wear the organisational medal today. And I was like, oh, what's this? Another, another yeah, thing there's here. something. Like, there's just See, this something is the world there. speaking to us. Mm-hmm. We think that the universe doesn't speak to us, but mm-hmm. it does, and through your top values. Mm-hmm. And I remember you guys saying to me, what do people come to you with? Like, what's the comment? And for ages I was like, oh, I don't. But then I think about it. Since I was a little girl, everyone's always said to me, Oh, you're so well organised. Oh, you're so well. Mm. And now I see it all the time. Mm. But I just because you choose to see it. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. see it. So now I just keep looking at my son. And my son had done an artwork, or they'd asked, "What do you see in your mother? Like, what is it that you love about your mother?" Earlier in the year, and it was in the middle on the wall of their um, prep classroom, and it said, "My mum shines really bright." And I remember when I walked past, like it just took my breath away. I was mm. just like. <gasps> That's like that's the feeling. Mm. Like that that's mm. it. And he sees me so differently. So what that's am I calling. not seeing here? And then that Saturday morning I woke up as like this this creative download of like you just I'm, saying, the I'm like whacking my husband going, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. And he's so like, good. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> I'm like, I've got it and I've just got to do it. And normally it'd be like I've got to plan this out or I've got to write I've got to write, I've got to write, I've got to write it all down. It's gotta be this and it's gonna be it's like no. No, and then I knew that my um, twin cousins had done, like, lots of marketing at, at uni and I said, this is the picture that I want. I want a butterfly and I want a house and I want the family. And I put it out to her and within 24 hours she had this beautiful image Logo. and I was like, that's just it. 
That's it. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah. And it's just kind of That's kept, the feminine mm, in business. Yeah. yeah. Just opened up that channel. It was. Yeah. And then I'm in the yeah. bar because I've hurt my back. And then because I'd hurt my back, I hadn't been able to, like, I hadn't been able to really do anything but read books. So I got back into reading, which you Julie had inspired me to do anyway mm. that year. And podcasts, like, couldn't get enough podcasts. And I'm sitting there listening. And then you mentioned that. And I'm thinking, <gasps> it's I a song. I can help you. <laughs> and then normally I was like, I should get out of the bath and I should get my computer and I should structure this email. And I was like, no, no. I just went onto your page, clicked on the connect set and literally just typed what came into my head and it was so set great. it up and didn't think anything so of it. Yeah. And then I got the response and it was like, and just that feeling straight away. I was just like, mm. yes. Yes, but it I took you a little right. while to get to yes, though. Yeah, like I was like, oh, what do you think? Like, oh, can I open my house like that? Can I, can I go there? Yeah. But I, I could see how then it would, I could see how, I could see in that what this would give all of us, right? Mm. Because there's so much in that. Mm. So much in there. And I was like, yes, mm. and let's do it together. <laughs> and let's and video bring it. everyone with us. It's going to be amazing. Let's create episodes like, you know, <laughs> Marie Kondo tidying up. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we've okay. done. Okay. So that's really what we've really done. Long. So it's been big. Mm. Mm. Huge. Just, yeah, absolutely huge. And, and what I really found having Tara work in a house, because I think, I mean, a lot of people understand the concept of, an organizer coming in. Do they? I don't know. I didn't. I got it completely wrong. What did you well, think? well, remember how I'm like, you were, because in the emails, you were like, oh, well, I'll probably need a whole day. And I'm like, a whole day? Oh, you, you're just going to need an hour. You just <laughs> need to walk through my house and go, you need a cupboard there. You need some wardrobes there. You need, and I'm like, yeah, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you need a whole day. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I know, and I was so gentle. Did you notice the reply? I was like, Oh, like I like to have more time than required. We, we're we probably looking at a half day. In my head, I'm like, that's ridiculous. Maybe a full. I'll be an hour. I'll send you on to Bridget's. <laughs> <laughs> In my head, yeah. I didn't really know what it was going to be. Mm. I didn't. So why don't we step it out? Because in my head, you're coming through to tell me where I need more storage space mm. and how I can store stuff better. Mm. But that's not what this was. No, and that's not kind of how I see it. So like the, I see that as being my genius. So my genius kind of is in space organisation. So I can look at something and organise a space and I'm very mm. well ordered and I can structure it. But the home is is so symbolic to me. And, and when I hurt my back, I realised that too, that being kind of like the root chakra is your home. So it's what everything else grows upon. So it's like your foundation, and your, mm. your base. And, and I want my kids to always feel that, like that warmth. Mm. And, and I mean, I always think when you say that, I think back to my own childhood and the houses that I, like I could feel houses mm. and I could feel spaces that I wanted to be in and I could feel ones that I didn't, right? Because mm. there's so much, it's yeah. so energetic. Mm. So energetic. Yeah, and I, I learned that a lot too, actually, in my son's prep year. So getting to know families and going to have play dates. And, yeah. and I was saying to you that I'd gone to one in particular, one of my friends, and I walked in and I was like, oh, this is it. This, like, this is the feel that I'm going for. And then a, another girlfriend like, a couple of days. We're going to be best friends. I just know it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> another girlfriend said to me a couple of days later when I'd mentioned that, and she's like, oh, um, so you've been there. Is that the first time you've been there? And I said, yeah, it is the first time I've been there. And she's like, just reminds me of your house. And I was like, <gasps> oh, really? Oh, no. Like, well, you're like, like, you don't know how much of a compliment that is. And then, again, I was just like, oh, there's something in that. There's, I'm just yeah. going to kind of uh, yeah, store, like, keep, yeah, yeah, let's yeah. let's just put that there and, and see. So that, that, yes. So what is it for you? What, how would you describe what you do? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, I guess it's, it's going into a house and seeing everyone's treasured possessions and that reflecting back to me or telling a story. It's almost like your house tells such a beautiful story of who you are and the people mm. that live in it. And, and I walk in and I just, I just, I can feel the energy. I can, I can feel what's, what's going on. Um, in that, yeah, I, that, yeah, I guess is my description it just tells a beautiful story of the people that live in that house and, and that really struck a chord with me because of my values and what's important to me to then be able to go into other people's houses and experience that and see 
what they have to offer also is, mm. has been really mind blowing for me. And I, I but I love it. Like I go in yeah, there and I see. You can tell. Like the first thing I think I said to both of you is the photos. So the photo mm. walls of the family. That that's always been for me what a home represents. Mm. Um, and people say, well, why don't you have any art? Why, why haven't you sort of done the interior design? And, well, my artwork is the photos of my kids. Like, mm-hmm. that is, that's what makes me happy. It's the first thing you see when you walk into my house. Mm-hmm. And the first thing that I see when I walk into both of your houses is that. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like the house is speaking to me. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's a part of my childhood um, and being quite intuitive and being able to... So there was maybe a lot of stuff going on in the house that wasn't being spoken mm-hmm. about, but I felt it mm-hmm. and I felt all of it. And so I've always... You I've, can feel houses. Well, and I can yeah. feel people as mm. well. And, saying, and the school journey for me with my kids or my son in particular has been huge because, you, get, you know, it's almost like going back to school yourself, but mm. it's feeling people and feeling energies and going into homes mm. and, yeah, and I just, yeah. So it's, And I've always, like, I've loved image and, and I've been very visual, but I couldn't quite work out what that kind of visualness and what that creativity was and then when mm. I think I texted you yesterday and I said oh there's some favorite p- places of your houses that are really special to me I love the visual because I love the feeling so maybe it's then the, the, the emotion that I get from mm. seeing that visual representation in your house is what lights me up so it's mm. almost like me coming into your house and finding those items that light you up so we'll talk about that with um, mm. the children mm. but I like to think that you open your door of your house and your values are there and they're reinforcing who, who, who you, you are, are and who you're becoming or That's what you know, where you're heading but the problem is society doesn't say that so from a marketing and I've heard you say that too from having worked in marketing mm. for so long it's that juggernaut of the tv and the advertising all the time buy more buy more your yeah. self-worth is based on buying more we mm. collect more mm. and that the only yeah, that's just noise. It's noise for our brain because our brains become completely overwhelmed by it. But it's it's shadowing the beautiful parts. Like mm. when I say when I found those beautiful affirmation cards buried underneath everything, all of my stuff. Yeah, all of my and they're paperwork. beautiful and they're mm. colourful and they're shiny and they're, it's almost like these little diamonds. I can go into someone's house and I can see these beautiful little diamonds mm. shining, and we've kind of just got to dig and, and move the other stuff and, and get really real about mm. being intentional about saying, okay, I want to go into your house and how do you want to feel? How does this space really want to, you know, want to feel? Mm. And what items are going to make you feel that way and allow you to be the person that you want to be? Because your house tells that story. It's like well, it's an energetic represent- exchange, isn't mm. it? So you can amplify mm. whatever energetic vibration that space holds Mm. right so you can amplify your experience of whatever Mm. that is based on that so that was totally what I got from your experience which I was not expecting was the experience of I love that you said okay so the spaces we're working on what do you want them to to be at Mm. and that's that's we're always bringing our intentions back to what are the Mm. the items that vibrate at that frequency mm. what is the space that vibrates at that frequency so that you walk into that and you're like pinging that frequency mm. in your body and then what you do with that magic then is yours right mm. but if we're continuously stimulating no different to in meditation various parts of our brain and our biochemistry then we live in that abundance more mm. right so then I was looking at what you were doing and particularly with my kids I was like well because it was my kids be- bedrooms mm. that we w- worked on I was like holy shit you can see them in a complete – you can see them with more clarity than what I can see mm. my own children with. Mm. We want to think that we know our children best and in some ways and respects we do, but in other ways we're so clouded by the selves mm. that are reflected in each of them. Do we actually even ever see them? And also how we want them to fit into our life, you know, very yeah. often if we're busy and trying to organise them and we won't always see them, mm. right? Yeah. And so I was watching this absolute magic that you brought with you sitting on the floor in an, an absolute cacophony of <laughs> noise and stuff <laughs> with each of my children and the presence. I, the energy was like a, the centre of a, of a vortex. I was like mm. straight down and you were completely present with the one child you were speaking to about the one item. Mm. Like it was... And, and it was like, you know, it's, it's like re- you had reverence for that child and that mm. item and what that meant to them. And you already mm. saw them. So you already mm. walked in and went, yeah, I, I can see that Jade 
these are her values and these are Lola's and these are Heath's. And I was like, holy shit. Mm. And I hadn't even said that to you or even looked around their rooms and seen that reflection in the Mm. stuff. Mm. I felt it. Well, this is what I'm saying, right? So I feel like what you do is offering an amplification of who you are by virtue of Mm. offering a space that vibrates at that truest self Mm. as opposed to the clutter that dampens the truest self. And and then that's a part of, I think, our journey as well, that we get kind of lost in who we are the older we get because society tells us be this way, do that, collect that. And, and I don't, like I don't want that for my. And it becomes kind of a layers on layers, top of each other. It is, it is. And then the house is almost through. a reflection mm. of how many layers you've you've got. And yeah. and that's been really important for me and my mother in Jenny. And what you've taught me is that they are, you know, they're beautiful the way they are, and that's their genius. And I want them to flourish. So mm. I want your home to be like that, and I want your kids. To, to have that, but I want that. them, and, yeah. and it's like my son with his Pokemon cards. You know, they're all beautifully well organized, and he's got a little spot in the house because I want him to come home and that be reinforced. This is me. These mm. are my values. This is what's important to me. Forget what everyone else is telling me. Yeah. This yeah. is me. I'm proud to be me. There is no one else like me. Mm. That is my gift, and that is what you two taught me. Mm. And now I feel like I have the toolkit. Like I, I've had it there, but I couldn't ever. I couldn't verbalize it. I couldn't explain it. Mm. But now you. have Kind of, get, you've given word. me that so kind of good. avenue to be able to mm. do it. And you were saying vortex. It is like a vortex. And yeah, my kids and my husband say it's like you just. It you was kind of. It was actually quite extraordinary to witness. Yeah, you, and you said mm. that too after you looked at the time lapse. Mm. I was like, I think I need to see myself doing it. It was really quite extraordinary, and particularly being an energetic practitioner as well, I could totally feel it. I was like, mm. this just feels like a fairy has just entered my home, <laughs> and I'm like. Oh, women together are amazing and I don't have to be everything because he's That's the thing angel. too, right? Like I don't have to be everything. No, mm. because turns out there's this beautiful woman, woman who can collaborate with me mm. and we both get to shine in that. It's not mm. this competitive space, right, because that's not the way the feminine is signed. So I was watching this whole thing going, this is magic. Mm. And then just actually breathing in the witnessing of someone else seeing your child's life. Mm. Like, could there be a more divine experience? So like, gorgeous. I just don't feel like there could be. Like, that feeds my brain, mm. like, the deepest meditation I could possibly mm. hope to reach. And it's and it's also, like, you know, paradigm busting too because it, it challenges the martyrdom of motherhood that says, you know, I have to just take on more and load myself up more and more responsibilities and splintering myself, whereas this yeah. is an off- offering to go... I, and, you know, I'm the first to say it, I know it's not my genius to be like, organising yeah. and, like, you know, optimising my space. It's not. Please like, come and pass up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I want that injected into my space so that we all get an opportunity to live more, you know, whole, you know, live more us, mm. right? And, like, I loved watching you like, have that genius idea because I have the challenge of I, I have, like, lots of storage space but just stuff just gets piled up or not Mm. particularly since I had pearl like I just haven't had the attention on it and so you came in you're like oh well what about if we just like get rid of all the stuff in this one cupboard and we make this a lego display cupboard like in Mm. our living room because it had like doors on it and Hugo was just like Mm. like he was working with you every step of the way he was so excited about it he was like so inspired and he wanted to show you his things that he was like building and thinking about which ones he could put where and Mm. like it was just so so amazing and like now I watch him and even Sylvie now like she put some of hers on there and like they they're bringing it into the space in a way that works for everyone so they feel lit up by it and so do I because I know it's not just going to be left half broken forgotten on the table Mm. they have ownership and responsibility over it and therefore also celebrating it because it has a space it has a home Mm. it's cared for and Mm -hmm. I love like the responsibility and the self-worth of having that responsibility what that gives them a hundred percent and I noticed Mm. it when I came in like I can just I can look at people's items and I can see from the photos that you've given me noticing different objects and when I said to you because as we went through your office, paint, paints and arts mm. and craft and that's kind of Sylvie. And then Sylvie was sitting outside painting, painting and crafting and it was all in those cupboards. And so I made a beautiful collection of all her arts 
and crafts. And so instead of it opening, you know, four or so cupboards and things sort of falling out, mm. they're all beautifully displayed in clear containers mm. so she can see it and it's all sparkling and shiny in there and yep. it's so much opportunity for her to be creative. creative. And then, as I said, I went into your office and I noticed that you had lots of highlighters and paints and mm. pastels and I was like, oh, You yes. are still the daughter of an artist. You are. Mm. Well, that's right. And now mm. we're sitting... In the, in in the art space. space. In my mum's art studio. So that's yeah. pretty amazing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Mm. The birthplace of creativity. Right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So tell us about your journey, Bridgie. <sighs> just your experience. It was just, I, I think, again, it was just letting you into my space and, and handing it over and just the how profound that was to just say, like, this is where I'm at right mm. now and and noticing the parts of me that you know might feel like oh I should have kept it more ordered or I should have been on top of that and then oh no was that hard did you really have to breathe into yeah I, I did yeah and like you know you I say, felt that you I did feel that how do you roll with that I mean I imagine entering someone's like behind closed doors right like mm. it becomes a really intimate space mm. particularly if you're dealing with people's greatest chaos I mm. imagine that you're going to be meeting personal feelings of shame or disappointment mm. or whatever. Mm. Yeah, Is I, that- I was going very gently because I noticed with the children straight away that mm. this, that they'd worked me out and they were like, is she going to come in here and throw everything of ours away? And then every time I pick something up, Sylvia would be like, oh, what are you doing with that basket? Yeah, oh. and, 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 and at one point mm. Sylvia, like, when, I, when I went out and saw her and she was painting, she's like, I want her to go home, oh. you know, like because she'd seen you as like someone coming in to take away her things or, mm. you know, to like change something that she obviously didn't want to see changed mm. where but did she get that from the concept of a, someone a, else is going to throw my stuff well out. i think you know we, we had like garbage bags out mm. and we'd taken everything out of the cupboards and we told her but i still think she was looking at what she was seeing and going mm. i don't know about this like i don't know but there was a clear moment i think when she could see the shift and that wraps up part one of our chat with tara and all about how your home tells a story of you and there was just so much in that, like, I'm just, like, still processing what, what we've... Oh, my gosh. And, and I can't tell you, like, how freaking vulnerable it feels for me. <laughs> like, I'm still in this kind of vortex of, like, <laughs> vulnerability. Um, yeah. And so I really hope that you can continue on the journey of vulnerability with us next week when we take you to part two, which is going to be more about... What, our, what stories our homes tell, or, or for her, what family she picked lineage. up. Family lineage. Like, yeah. and the patternings that she's seen. Resistance. The dynamic of children expressing what we're repressing yep. as you're going through the process of clearing out the stuck places, mm-hmm. right? It's metaphysical, emotional as much as it's physical. And one yep. supports the other as opposed to one being only correct. Mm. So there's lots of kind of juicy insights, I think, into there are. yeah who we are and how we function and just how reflective our spaces are and how beautifully and seamlessly Tara just rolled with yeah, that. Yeah. With reverence. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I just, and I can't get enough of the synergy between her genius of organising and, and of how she can see spaces and then what she's integrated through her years of work applying what we talk about. So like it's, great, it's just, and, it? and to me it's like just it's beautiful. Tried, oh, alignment. Yeah, beautiful alignment, but also that just exactly what you need from some from someone who's going to come into your space because yeah. they can have the the respect, yeah. the awareness, the ability to check their own judgments and projections, and and just yeah. try to be with as much of what this home is representing and what what its owners want it to reflect. Totally, which I think she's done. So to connect with Tara is via Instagram at the Household Advisor. Mm-hmm. And to connect with you, Bridget, suburbansandcastles.com and you, Jules, thepleasurenutritionist.com. Remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. And if you want to support Nourishing the Mother and all the late nights, the early mornings, the blood, sweat and tears we pour into our art, then please go to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast and become our patron. As a patron, you're helping all of the cost of operating this podcast, the hosting, the editing, the transcription, helping all of that be completely covered and joining a community who are all about honouring our journeys and continuing to open. The more support we have, the longer we can last. So become a patron. We'd love to have you. Go to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast. 
We literally couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much for listening and please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.